All right. Another video. Man, oh man. I run out of ink. All right. Yeah. So, this is what we got. Again, uh, I'm doing this video again because um, I like to make videos from SOA that I don't like the explanations for. So here's my explanation. Um, this is the setup. Again, read the question five to a hundred times as usual. Uh, what do we have? Uh, what are we given? Let's just go over what we're given. Uh, and a man purchases a life insurance policy on his 40th birthday. Okay, and um, well, we get a payment. Uh, this is always, remember, <coughs> well, if you've seen my videos before, you know that I always do some sort of something sub P as my insurance payment. This is my insurance payment. Okay. And the payment is equal to a 5,000. <coughs> yes, 5,000 if he dies before he's 50. And it's equal to nothing if he lives past 50. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm not gonna go into anything there, but <laughs> that's the situation. We're also given a cumulative, a CDF, right? This is capital F, the cumulative distribution uh, function for his lifetime. So this is the lifetime of a man who was born the same year as this individual, right? Because he's 40 now. So um, this is the cumulative distribution for uh, the length of his lifetime, right? And of course, t is greater than zero. So they have written as a piecewise defined function, but this is the only part we're concerned with, right? What is the question we're after here? The question we want to answer, and you can absolutely do it um, the way they did it. Um, I can maybe go through that a more precise way, but I wanna do it a different way using the mixture approach. This is one of the most useful things I've realized uh, about exam P is knowing how to do these mixtures. So we're interested in the expected um, we're interested in the expected insurance payment, but be careful here uh, because he's already lived 40 years. So um, we're actually not interested in this. I'm gonna write down a mixture um, for the expected, expected value. So this is equal to uh, the expected value of the insurance payment uh, given that T uh, is, is greater than or equal to 40, right? And this is what we want. This is what we want because he's already lived uh, 40 years. Now remember how this works. This is a lot like, this is a lot like uh, the law of total probability, but I use it for expectation. Okay, uh, let me give myself some more room. I know I'm gonna run out of room if I write that. So this is the expected value, okay, of the insurance uh, payment given that he's already lived 40 years because he has, right? Times the probability that he's lived 40 years plus. Remember how this works. I'm just gonna do another conditional expectation, but the other one has to be the complement of this value, of this quantity right here. So times, uh, sorry, plus the expected value of the insurance payment uh, given, given uh, that he's less than, strictly less than 40, times the probability that he's uh, less than 40. And something you may wanna think about is just like which one is equal and which one is not. It doesn't matter because the distribution is continuous. Remember, it does not, not matter at all. If it's discrete, it matters. Con continuous distribution, though, we can include it or not include it, doesn't matter. Main thing I wanna point out though, these have to be complements. So either T is greater than equal to 40 or T is less than 40. It's the only way it works. <coughs> now, this is what we want. This is what we need to find this. We need to find this guy. The way I'm gonna do this um, is how I approach a different problem, specifically number 238. I made a video about it. I'm gonna find everything else, and that will give me this. So we can find this directly. It's actually not too bad. Um, that's pretty much what SOA does. Of course, they don't um, explain it very well, but regardless, let's find it this way. So let's just do these individual pieces, right? Um, let's start with the easy stuff. Let's start with the easy stuff. This is the easiest thing here. This is the easiest thing here. What's the expected um, insurance payment given uh, that he's less than 40? Well, 5,000, because he died before he's 50, right? So this is 5,000, so not much thought there. 
Uh, what is the probability um, that he lives greater than or equal to 40? So this is just actually anyone greater than or equal to 40. Well, this is the CDF. So this is just the survival characterization of that. So one minus that. But this piece, this piece is one minus uh, the CDF evaluated at 40. Hopefully that's not too big of a jump, right? Um, this is basically the survival character characterization, right? So hopefully you see that. All right, so this is equal to, um, this is equal to uh, E, well, do I need to write it? Yeah, let's just write it. This is equal to uh, E, the exponential. I wrote it EXP, get used to that. If the argument's annoying, which it is, we write it as EXP. So uh, one minus 1.1 to the 40, okay, divided by 1,000. Okay, so that's that value. That takes care of that. So this is check. We're good. This is check. We're good. How about this one? Well, this is exactly just the CDF. This is exactly the CDF. So this is uh, this is exactly uh, F uh, T of 40. F T of 40, which is equal to, okay, this is equal to um, 1 minus E X P raised to the 1 minus 1.1 1 .1, uh, to the 40 over 1,000. Okay, and I'm not going to approximate those, whatever. We can, I guess, maybe in a minute. So we have this as well. That leaves me with one more thing. One more thing, and this actually is not too bad uh, either. It's not too bad either. Let me give myself uh, some more room because I might have to explain a little bit. Okay, um, right, right. So uh, what do we have now? Now what I have, now what I have is, so we're gonna find this, the expected, just the expected insurance payment. That's all this is. Now just, just something to write down here. Um, I want you to just think about this for a second. How do you just calculate the expected insurance payment? If you think about it for a second, uh, what you do is you integrate um, whatever the payment is times the PDF. So let me write that. You integrate over the region you're interested in, which is zero uh, to infinity, times the PDF. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, times the insurance payment, which is 5,000, times the PDF, which I don't even have. I do not even have uh, the PDF. Sorry, uh, the insurance payment only goes to you 50, right? Because he dies when he's 50. So I'm only gonna pay this if he lives less than 50. So this would be how I calculate it. We don't have actually this though. So what, what can I do? And we could find it though, I take the derivative of that, but most of you probably don't know how to take the derivative of 1.1 1 .1, uh, to the T. That involves LN, whatever, right? Chain rule. But it's kind of a weird derivative. You're not used to that probably. So this is what we're gonna do. This is equal to 5,000 times the integral zero to 50 of FT, again, PDF, PDF from zero to 50. But wait a second, what does this mean? How do you interpret this, uh, this value right here? This is exactly what? This is exactly the probability uh, that t is less than or equal to 50. Oh, wait a minute, that's just the CDF. So this is equal to, uh, at 50, right? So this is just 5,000 times f t of 50. So we have that as well. So we have everything. We have this. Let's just isolate this and we'll be done with it. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. Now I just want to uh, get this by itself. This is just a linear equation if you think about it. Right, I have all these terms. I have all these visual numerical values. I just need to isolate this and think of it as a variable. This is just a, solving a linear equation. So easy peasy, right? Easy peasy, let me do it. Let me do it real quick. Hopefully I can remember the values I just found. All right, so this tells me sort of my conclusion so hence, hence, I want, I want this by itself. So let me get it by itself. The expected value of the insurance payment, given that he's at least 40 already, is equal to this guy minus this guy, right? We just found this. This was 5,000 times the CDF evaluated at 50 minus this piece. What was this? Minus 5,000 times of the CDF, F T of 50, right? Divided by,
sorry, 40. I was gonna say, wow, that was about to be zero, right? This is 40. Boy, oh boy. 40 <laughs> divided by this. Divided by um, 1 minus Ft of 40. If you look at the SOA, uh, what they have for this, they basically just have this. Let me write it one other way. This is equal to 5,000 uh, times the quantity, excuse me, Ft of 50 minus Ft of 40 divided by 1 minus uh, Ft of 40. This is exactly what they've computed, but they just say this is what it is, no justification, no explanation. And uh, I, th I can't remember, I think you should get, um, verify some calculator, but you should get uh, 348. So that takes care of it. Um, again, let me just mention something real quick. It's actually not too bad to compute that directly. I've done so many freaking problems, it's insane. My exam's tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna make a video about that, Dale, uh, just in a second. The first time I did this, I actually computed it this way. It's not too bad, um, but for whatever reason, when I saw this problem again, I think like two days ago, when I was taking a practice exam, I did it this way. I don't know why, I just, for some reason, when I saw this problem again, it just made sense for me to do it this way. So anyways, tell me what you think, thoughts about it, uh, comment below, and, and thank you for subscribing.